Hello, beautiful women, far and wide, close and near, hello. This is an invitation for you to come and join me into a month long, a 30 day and night immersion into the blood mysteries. I am calling this womb awakening. And I'm choosing this time of year because this is when the new year begins for me, truly. Truly. I dive deep and dark into the winter. There's no way around it. Every year I try to avoid it, but I don't. Every winter I just go deep and I go dark and I go silent. And I always, always emerge in this time of year. So here we are in spring. I grew up Catholic, and every year we, we had Lent. And it was a time that we offered up something to be in alignment with spirit. And it's a deep spiritual practice. And this, so this is my invitation to you as women, as independent, sovereign beings. Are you willing to look at your life and look at the habits that you may have which may be keeping you stagnant. So this is the invitation. I put out the idea of celibacy, and that's not in a rigid way. That is more in a way of becoming conscious and aware of our habits, of the ways that we may use our sexuality. I'll talk about this more deeply when we go into our immersion. So what this will be, Again, 30 days. We'll begin on the blood moon and end on a full moon. I will have daily inspirations, whatever that may be. It may be a video, a poem, a meditation. I'm not sure. And there's no requirements. You don't have to do anything. I'll have a couple book recommendations, but again, it's not necessary for you to do anything other than receive. Receive and open. Become that magnetic womb. At the end of our immersion, I'll give everything to you in a compilation for you to take with you that you may fall back on. So what is womb wisdom? I'm going to share a story with you. This was about, oh my goodness, 18 years ago, 15, no, 18, 17 years ago. Um... When I first became a mother, I'd had a home birth. Both my babies were born at home, but I had a home birth, and it was it was a deep immersion into the dark feminine. It was a complete surrender. After 30 hours of intensive labor, not sleeping, and um, losing a lot of blood, a lot of blood, um, coming dangerously close to the other side is how I'll put it. But I made it through. And then several hours later, my son was showing signs of a respiratory infection. So after all of this preparation and surrender into home birth and having this amazing experience, I had to go um, bring him to the hospital anyway and surrender my ideas. That's a longer story. Nonetheless, it was a crazy few weeks, a crazy introduction into motherhood. My first immersion out into the world was when I went to Andronico's. It's Andronico's in Berkeley, you know, North Berkeley. And it was the first time I went out into public after having given birth, gone through this whole ordeal. And here I was in the supermarket. And I looked around and I saw women. For the first time, I saw women, and there I was, 28 years old, having just been through hell <laughs> on all levels, and I began to weep because I realized every single human being comes to earth through a woman's body, blessed be, and a goddess willing. 
So it didn't really matter if we were women or not, if we became mothers in the sense of giving birth to biological children or not, but there was a profound power within a woman's body. And as women, we have the power to connect up into the cosmos, to create life, to be the incubators of life. We give birth. We give birth. So this immersion is what are you giving birth to? which may be a human child. And I will invite you into ways that you can connect with that spirit if you choose. Or to connect to something bigger, a project, a piece of work. Connect to your beloved, whatever it may be. We give birth. So there I was in Andronico's weeping, understanding for the first time sisterhood, motherhood womanhood. And as I wept and the hormones rushed through me, I began to lactate and just, it was the first time out as a new mother. And women came over to me, older women who were mothers themselves who saw me and embraced me and held me. And I had never known that level of sisterhood and womanhood. I'll share more about this in our journey. And I'm sure many of you will have more to share. The other story briefly I want to share about what this whole journey is, is a woman unto herself. I suggested celibacy because celibacy is actually important. You know, there's a, there's a reason that many mystics and follow that. There was a reason. Um, not right or wrong. But there's an energetic quality that we can recapture when we come into ourselves. So that is my invitation to you, primarily to break habits, to break habits, to become conscious. And there's an energetic melange that happens when we have sex with multiple partners. There's just that's just something that happens. We take people in as women. We take situations into our wombs, particularly if our partner has multiple partners. We take on energies. So the invitation to celibacy is simply an invitation to cleanse and clear, but more importantly, energetically, to become more conscious, present, and back into ourselves. There's a deep unconscious, what I call the dark shadow of the feminine, of using our sexuality. It's mostly unconscious. It's mostly unconscious. So my invitation this month will be to become conscious. So the story I wanted to share. When I was in my 20s, I, I was dating a a magnificent man. I mean, he was magnificent. He was and is amazing. Um, and I wanted to have children. He didn't. He had a purpose. He was clear on his purpose in life. He was very motivated. He was very clear. I was very clear that I needed to become a mother. And that wasn't a part of his path. So we, you know, parted ways very early. But we became friends and remained friends. And he was interested in another woman. And um, I knew who she was. He told me about her, and I, I followed her. I, I was interested, of course, because he was marvelous. In my youth and in my naivety, um, I remember looking at this woman and wondering, and, and, and that dark shadow of the feminine, and my youth came upon me, and I said, oh, she's, she's older. You know, she's not as pretty as me. She's not as youthful as me. She's not as whatever as me. And it's really embarrassing to admit this, actually, because it's, it's, it's embarrassing. I haven't spoken about this in almost 20 years. But I remember that part of me, and I remember this unconscious part of me using my sexuality to try and get this man. I didn't really understand why he... 
It was a shallow part of me that couldn't understand his interest in this woman when he could have had me, even though in truth, I had a different path. I wanted to have children and all this. Anyway, my point is, is this woman was a woman unto herself. The original word of virgin, a woman unto herself. She had a purpose. She was working on a big project in life. This project didn't necessarily bring her money or fame, but she was committed to something bigger than herself. And she was too busy to be concerned about makeup or clothes or whatever it may be. Even children, she wasn't a, a mother in the sense of giving birth biologically to human children, but she was a mother in the sense that she had a big project and was very involved with many, many people. It was a fascinating experience for me. This man eventually married her. And I am so honored and grateful that I got to see his process. You know, he loved her. And it's because she had something bigger than him. She wasn't concerned with sex or their relationship. She was driven to a larger purpose as a woman. And she wanted a partner, maybe or maybe not. It didn't really matter. But she knew who she was. And this man waited for her, even though she told him she was too busy, her work was too important. He knew, he saw her, and he waited for her for years. Now they're together and they are doing powerful work in the world. They're shifting consciousness and humanity in big, powerful ways. Being a young woman and witnessing this was such a powerful experience for me. What is it to be a woman unto yourself? To take this power, this sexuality, our wombs, our energy, our bodies, and devote our lives to becoming mothers of the world, mothers of the universe, connecting up to that cosmic power. We give birth. So what is it that you are giving birth to? How can we wipe away your past? Have you come into peace with your past so that you can be truly present and be a catalyst for magnificent, marvelous, miraculous transformation in the world? That is my invitation to you this month. What is it to be a woman, a woman? What is it to make love in every day of your life and to not need a man to do that? What is it to love yourself, to make love to yourself, to make love to God? the goddess. I'm going to share some of the curriculum here, but mostly I would like this to be a mystery. It is the blood mysteries after all. So we're going to ebb and flow and be creative with it. I have an agenda and I'm willing to open to the goddess and what she wants to move within us. So please join me. Please join me, join our sisterhood, join the womanhood. We'll dive deep and you can choose how deep you want to go. But let's get real. Let's step into our true creative powers, which is far bigger than 
a relationship or a boyfriend or a potential husband. Or let's truly see what it is we have to offer to the world and the transformation of humanity. I'm going to have a lot of practices for you. As I said, you can do or not. We'll have a Facebook group. There'll be four webinars. Get daily inspirations. Blessed be, sisters. Come into the womb of awakening. 10% of my profits will go to um, the 13 Moon Sanctuary, Sanctuary of the Open Heart, 13 Moon Mystery School. Excuse me. <laughs> they blend, they're one and the same. And not for sale on profit, which is about ending human trafficking and sex slavery, which I feel in essence is as women, if we could heal the collective wound in our culture and society and humanity around our sexuality, there would be no, no, no room for human trafficking. We were truly standing in love if we were promoting environments of love for all of our children, all of our men, all of our sisters, our brothers, sons, daughters, fathers, mothers, all of it. If we were truly providing, providing love for all, No one would be needing to rape or hurt another in human form or the earth. So let's step up as women. Let's, let's step up as women and claim our true, true power, potential, and the possibility. That is what I'm committed to. That's what I'm planting a seed for with this. Let's give ourselves to something bigger, far bigger than what we imagined. And let's